The Newbury Electronics Assembly Facility is situated just 150 metres from the PCB fabrication plant, the subject of our factory tour in part one. Newbury Electronics has its base not far from the town centre of Newbury on the River Kennet, a town where many high-tech companies have taken root in recent years. Once again we join Philip King, this time for a tour through the electronics assembly process. Our quotation team estimates the cost of parts and assembly according to our client's requests for quote. Customers send us orders and we have to check those against our quotation to ensure that everything we've quoted for has been ordered and everything ordered has been quoted for. We aim to respond to client's request for a quote within 24 to 48 hours. To start the purchasing process to put together a kit of parts, we upload the bill of materials onto our production control system. If there are any queries, we get back to clients straight away. We will also check we have all the data required to make the product, and when we're happy with that, we'll acknowledge the order and we'll prepare the documentation for production. Every step in the production process has to be planned with care to ensure we meet the specification of our client. Our buying team not only has to search for the best prices for the products uh, from our suppliers, but also to take into account extra quantities required for lead-ins or for spares to account for any scrap that might arise during the production process. We also have to consider the packaging of the components. Some parts may need to be on reels, some parts may need to be loose. During the course of the electronic assembly process, components are susceptible to damage through electrostatic discharge, commonly called ESD. To avoid this risk, we take extensive precautions. The floor is conductive and earthed. All the staff are required to wear wrist straps and conductive footwear. And they will check that their ESD precautions are working satisfactorily on a test set. Kitting is the heart of the electronic assembly process. Every part that arrives, we have to check against the bill of materials to check that we have ordered the right part and that the supplier has delivered the right part. We also check the quantities, but invariably there could be shortages. In doing so, we often have to examine the parts within their protective packaging. That means opening the packaging, and if they are moisture sensitive parts, they'll also have to be resealed under vacuum to ensure that moisture doesn't find its way into the component. Here we're vacuum resealing moisture resistant bags to exclude air and reseal them against uh, the ingress of humidity. Once we're satisfied that the components received are correct, we'll print out a barcoded label to apply to the component pack. These are our stocks of resistors and capacitors. All these reels are used on the shop floor on the SMD placement machines and we supply them free of charge to clients. Many electronic components are susceptible to the ingress of moisture. These include items such as ICs, ball grid arrays and in fact the humble printed circuit board. To avoid this, once the parts are issued to the shop floor, we will store them in a humidity controlled dry cabinet. This is our dry store cabinet. In this cabinet we keep moisture sensitive components to ensure they don't absorb water from the atmosphere. The cabinet keeps the components at a relative humidity of around 3% and that is sufficient to make sure they're dry enough to solder 
uh, later on in the process. Nearly all component assemblies require us to prepare the SMD placement programs which will guide the operator to the correct position for all the feeders and for which components go on which feeder. Our CAD-CAM programming team takes clients' data and converts that to computer programs that are readable by our SMD machines and our AOI machines. We are fortunate enough to have our own machine to cut our own solder paste stencils and this gives us the great benefit that we can cut laser stencils very quickly, within one hour even. This is a typical stencil that we cut and this is our laser stencil cutter. We're the only company in the UK which has their own laser cutting stencil machine and that gives us a great advantage in that we can cut stencils as and when we want. We don't have to wait for them to come from third party suppliers which may take one or two extra days. It cuts quite fast but because there's so many holes on a typical stencil it might take up to an hour for this machine to complete the process. Because we cut our own stencils we do not have any additional charges for clients for these stencils. Before the service mount parts are placed by the SMD machines, we screen print solder paste onto the surface of the pads. The solder paste has the consistency of butter and this is just thick enough so when the surface mount parts are placed on the surface of the pad they stay in position. We have nine pick and place SMD assembly machines and these machines are programmed to pick parts from reels and place them onto the surface of the printed circuit board and they can do this at the rate of up to 20,000 parts an hour. It takes about half to one day to program a machine and set it up and the production run for a few circuit boards may only last for about an hour. This is the larger of our two SMD placement shops we have six Yamaha iPulse M20 pick and place machines uh, installed here. Two are in the lines here, the SMD lines, and then one is in another SMD line on the far side. And the other four machines operate on a standalone basis. At the end of each SMD line is a solder reflow machine. This is a conveyorized oven that fuses the solder paste into a solder joint. The SMD machines are extremely productive and it's essential that we check the first offs are correct. To do this, we inspect them on a small AOI machine called a first article inspection machine, which checks that the correct part is placed with the right orientation at the right coordinate. Here we're programming the text on this particular part. We're drawing a box around it and the machine will inspect that box to make sure the text that it is recorded is seen on all subsequent parts. And if it doesn't see that text it will treat it as a reject. For larger batch sizes which may be quantities of 25 or 50 pieces upwards and certainly when we have to manufacture a thousand pieces or more we'll run these production runs on our SMD assembly lines. This is one of our highest capacity SMD assembly lines. This station you've got the loader which feeds the solder paste printer. There's an inspection station here. This is the first SMD station. 
capable of placing 20,000 parts an hour. There's an inspection station here and a second SMD machine, again capable of placing 20,000 parts an hour. That passes through to an inspection station here and then into the reflow machine, then out onwards into the collector at the end, which collects the finished boards. AOI, or Automatic Optum Inspection, is a machine which takes an optical image of the circuit board under examination. It compares the images of the components it sees with those in its memory, and it can detect any misplacements or wrongly placed parts, or the absence of parts, or parts that are placed the wrong way around. It can also detect the presence or absence of solar fillets to ensure that all connections are good. Most components these days are placed by service mount assembly machines. Invariably, there are always some hand-placed components as well. These may be leaded parts where the parts have to be inserted down holes and the, the wires cropped off, or they may be such parts as connectors. Usually they come in strips, but these ones were loose in the bag, so we had to place them by hand. We had no other choice. This is our selective solder machine. It's a robotic soldering machine which solders leaded joints automatically. You can see here the head here on the camera. It's operating now. The board's been fluxed and preheated and the head is passing around soldering joints individually one at a time. It may appear quite slow but actually it will solder four times faster than a, a hand or a human can. And more to the point, it never gets tired and will carry on soldering all day long at the same speed. Boards for wave soldering are loaded on the infield conveyor here, then passed to the flux station and then onto the preheat zone and they emerge on the conveyor to pass over the wave solder. Wave soldering is a process where the whole circuit board is immersed in a solder wave and all the joints on the underside of the board where they touch the wave will be soldered at the same time. If we're going to use the wave soldering machine there can be no SMD parts mixed in with the leaded parts. Many components have their solar joints under the body of the part, for instance ball grid arrays or QFN devices. If that's the case, then AOI or visual inspection cannot check the quality of the joint. We have no other choice than to use an X-ray inspection machine to inspect the quality of these connections. The flying probe test machine is a sophisticated test instrument which measures the value of components in circuit. It can test a circuit board at the rate of about five tests a second and the machine will measure resistance, capacitance and inductance at various voltages and frequencies. In this way, the value of every part on the circuit board can be checked. Once circuit boards are complete, they may be put through a functional test. Functional test is where we power up an electronic assembly and test whether it functions according to the client specifications. At the end of the assembly process, we finally inspect the product by eye. 
not every part on a circuit board can be inspected by AOI or by the X-ray machine. And these parts have to be looked at visually. At the end of the production process, every electron assembly is wrapped in anti-static bubble wrap. As a company, we have a policy of recycling where it's economical. And uh, here, for example, we've got the solar dross from the wave solder machine, and that will be returned to the suppliers of the tin for refining and eventual return to us as virgin product. We recycle our cardboard. It all goes in this orange bin here. We've got masses of cardboard and paper there. And also our electronics gap goes in the blue container here. And uh, you've got scrap circuit boards and components, wires, and uh, sundry items there. In this video, we followed the electronics assembly process through various mechanised procedures, hand placement of parts, testing and quality control. In part one, we saw how PCBs are made, the tooling, drilling, lamination, plating and printing of the copper blanks before final inspection. We hope you've enjoyed the factory tours. Thanks for watching.